Let's take a look at our next parity theory, purchasing power parity, or PPP. This is known as the law of one price, which really asserts that identical goods should sell for the same price across different countries when expressed in a common currency. An example of this could be a product that costs $100 in the US, and that product, according to the law of one price, really should cost an equivalent amount in euros in the eurozone when adjusting for the exchange rate. We have two versions of PPP. One is absolute PPP and the second is relative PPP. So absolute PPP is a theory that states that the exchange rate between two countries should equal the ratio of the country's price levels, assuming there are no transaction costs or trade barriers. This rarely holds because of bad assumptions as it doesn't account for the frictions that are associated with things like transaction costs and trade barriers. So an improvement on that theory in some ways is relative PPP, which is a theory that states that changes in the exchange rate are proportional to the inflation rate differential between the two countries over time. This really asserts that spot rate change is equal to inflation differentials. In general, the relative purchasing power parity is better suited and holds more so over the long term relative to the absolute purchasing power parity, which we said rarely holds. Absolute purchasing power parity says that the equilibrium exchange rate between countries A and B will be based on the ratio of their price levels. So in this formula, this S sub A divided by B, that's the nominal exchange rate between the countries A and B. Then this P sub A divided by P sub B is a ratio of both countries' price levels or price indexes, we could call it either one. So the P sub A is the overall price level or price index for country A, which really represents the average price of the goods and services for that country. And then the P sub B is the same for country B. So absolute PPP assumes that the prices of goods when adjusted for exchange rates are the same across countries. However, this may not hold true. Things like transaction costs, trade barriers, differences in goods and services can drive these differences. We also know anyone who's lived knows that this often is not true because you know either you yourself have gone on vacation or you might know people that have gone to other places or lived in other places and they'll say, oh man, you wouldn't believe how cheap this thing is over in this country or how expensive this thing is over in this country, right? Things aren't going to always cost the same in every country. So we had some problems with absolute purchasing power parity. Now we can look at relative purchasing power parity, which adjusts for the fact that absolute price level equality across countries is unrealistic. So we're basically trying to improve on the last theory a little bit. So this focuses on changes in price levels and changes in exchange rates and asserts that the percentage change in the exchange rate between currency A and currency B, that is represented by this symbol here, should be approximately equal to the difference between inflation in country A and inflation in country B. So whichever country is expected to have higher inflation will be expected to depreciate, their currency will be expected to depreciate relative to the other country's currency, which makes perfect sense, right? If your currency is inflating by more than another country, it should come to be worth less over time relative to that other currency. So then we can look at the empirical evidence of does this theory really actually hold in reality when we look at the data and we see that over the short term no relationship between changes of inflation and changes in exchange rates is evident in the empirical data 
So we could say that generally this relative PPP theory doesn't hold in the short term. However, over the long term, there appears to be a relationship. So we could say that this relative PPP tends to hold over the long term. You can get 15% off full CFA courses featuring my lecture videos by clicking the link in either the pinned comment or the description and using promo code RYAN15 at checkout.